Hello friends, I welcome you in this section and in this session I am going to cover how to cover the Indian history for the prelims as well as the mains examination. So what will be the coverage of this session? So I will cover the prelim syllabus. What are the certain basic things about the Indian history? The, I'll show you the pre previous year uh, question pattern, the books and resources that are supposed to be followed, the main syllabus, the main UPSC pattern, uh, do's and don'ts, right? So first of all, what is the syllabus? And before the syllabus, let us see a little bit about the importance of history in the mains examination and the prelims examination. Overall, in the prelims examination, if we see out of the 100 questions, between 15 questions to 20 questions will come from the history portion. And when I say history portion, it basically includes ancient history, medieval history, modern history, right? And some of the areas of the art and culture are also overlapping along with the history portion. So the coverage is almost 20%, 15% to 20% of the examination, right? That means this area becomes very, very crucial. The second important aspect is that this entire paper is static. So the good thing is that we don't need to follow the current affairs for the history except a couple of things which keep appearing here or there in the examination. So most of the time this is static portion so we have to cover once and it is sufficient right we don't need to you know uh, upgrade it by the current affairs we don't need to interlink with the current affairs once it is done it is done so this is the good thing about the history right so these two things you should understand now let us see the syllabus which has been given by the UPSC. So in the prelims examination, the syllabus is only one liner, history of India and Indian national movement, right? But if we see the previous question pattern, we can identify that there are three portions. The first portion is ancient history, then we have medieval history and then we have modern history. In the examination, you will find the questions from all of them. The highest importance goes to the modern history. The highest number of questions will come from here. Then second highest goes to the ancient history and third highest to the medieval history. In the last couple of years, the weightage of medieval history has been increasing. Now, what are the important areas that we should focus upon? In the ancient history, we have to cover certain ages, the Paleolithic age, Mesolithic age, Neolithic age, Chalcolithic ages. And in this portion, we have to focus upon what are the important features of these ages and what are the changes over the different ages. So we have to really uh, interlink the different ages in terms of the features. Then Indus Valley Civilization. In this Indus Valley Civilization, we have to see the important rivers and the settlements around that river. And we have also to see the different art and culture associated with the Indian Indus Valley civilization. Then Vedic age and post Vedic age is also very important. Pre Vedic and post Vedic both are very very important and there are some important terms for example Prohit, Rajan, Jan and the questions can be asked based upon any of those terms and literature and society concerned with that is also important. Then religion from the Indian ancient history especially the Buddhism and Jainism, these two religions are very very important. If you focus upon these two religions, uh, I am guaranteeing almost every year the one question you will find from this area. So pre please prepare this area in a very good manner. Now medieval history, in the medieval history the first importance goes to the religious movement. So different religious movement, uh, Sufi movement and different important uh, uh, contributors to the Bhakti movement, all those uh, er eras are important. Then important rulers, what is their contribution, art and architecture, this is very very crucial. Although you will cover this part in the art and culture, but still art and architecture is overlapping with the medieval history. There were a lot of developments, for example, the Islamic architecture. In the recent couple of years, as I told you, the medieval history is becoming all the more important. Now coming to the modern history. In the modern history, 
you will find advent of Europeans, rise of British and the East Indian Company, British Raj and its impact, social cultural changes and freedom struggle. Out of this, this area has not been that much important for the prelims, but this area is important for the mains. And this area has been very important for the prelims, right? And inside this, the questions based upon the Gandhi, Gandhian face, that those questions have been important both in the prelims as well as the mains examination. As far as source is concerned, I will discuss the source of each of the areas in the coming session. Now let us see a couple of questions so that you can get an idea whether the questions are easy, difficult or medium. So this is the question of 2019. This question is about the Charter Act of 1813. The so question is consider the following statement about the Charter Act of 1813. It is ended the trade monopoly of the East India Company in India except for the trade in tea and trade with China. It asserted the sovereignty of the British crown over the Indian territories held by the company. The revenues of India were now controlled by the British government. So this question is comparatively easy question. If you know about the important features of the Charter Act of 1813, you can easily solve this question. The answer is option A. Friends, in this uh, session, I am not discussing the question as such. I am just showing you the questions are not very, very easy. But if you cover the syllabus in uh, in the religious manner, then it becomes easy. The questions are not very, you know, one liner or you can like identify just by reading once. But still, if you are reading the syllabus in the books in a very religious manner, then it becomes easy. Next set of questions is, consider the following. Desert deification of the Buddha, treading the path of Bodhisattvas, image worship and the ritual. Which of the following are features of the Mahayan Buddhism? As I told you, that almost every year you will find the question from the Buddhism or the Jainism or both of them. Right? So... This Mahayan Buddhism question is very very easy. If you know and uh, detail about this Buddhism, then you can e easily solve this question, right? Next question is with reference to the forced labor or history in India, consider the following statement, right? This question is from the medieval history, and this question is one of the difficult questions, right? So the first question that we discussed about the Charter Act that was medium. Mahayan Buddhism question was easy and this question is difficult. The point that I want to make you is that the question will be having, uh, you know, a diversity in terms of the difficulty. So you have to focus on all the angles and in the examination, you not, need not solve 100% question. If you are solving 90% question with the accuracy, you are through, right? So don't worry about those questions which you could not solve. But you should worry about those questions which you sold. The, the accuracy should be high in those questions. That is the most important thing you should you know, ensure. Now, what are the different resources? So if we talk about the NCRT, we should focus upon the old NCRT. The new NCRT, I will say you can read once, but you can also can also ignore, right? You can also ignore. What you can do, one more thing you can do, that you can see the name of chapters and you can, you can actually focus upon the, those chapters from the old NCRT only, just by just going through the name of chapters. For example, uh, uh, there is a chapter about the travelers who came from different parts of the world to India, right? So when you are going through the ancient history, you just go through the travelers who visited India. Right? Because the question can be asked on, on the travelers, right? So now, from the old history, three NCRT are important. Ancient, Indi ancient Indian, uh, class 11, medieval India, class 11, and modern India, class 12. All of them are easily available in the market. And you should not take shortcut. You should study these NCRT completely in originality. You can go for synopsis or crux only after reading these NCRT. Because if you directly go to the crux or synopsis, then you will actually miss the interlinkages. You will actually miss the story part in the history. In the history, whether it is ancient history, medieval history, modern history, the good thing is that you can go through the entire book as a story, and be, it becomes very, uh, you know, interesting. So you should find one or the other reason why I am going to study the subject. This should, it will become very interesting. Then spectrum by the Rajiv Ahi. This is the 
golden book i will say you will find lot of questions from this so for the modern history this question is the gold this book is the gold right then tamil nadu book from the 11th so if you are covering this ancient ncert then you don't need to cover the tamil nadu book tamil nadu book i will say uh, is just 50% of the ncert so if you are having the shortage of time then you can go for covering this ncert and having the crux of this ncert uh, uh, the, the ncert right so you cover the tamil nadu book and crux of ncert and if you having sufficient time you don't need to cover the tamil nadu book at all you just go through the original ncert and the crux of original ncert india's struggle for independence which was written by the bipin chandra it is important for the mains i will say not required for the prelims for the prelims this book will not be required because this book deals with concept and the analysis part and whatever important things are there have already been included in the spectrum book so spectrum book is nothing but it's a, a combination of the ncert and the bipin chandra book if you cover both ncert and the bipin chandra book then you will realize that spectrum is nothing but compilation and the synopsis of both these book only so if you go through the spectrum then you are you make it sure that everything is going fine now what is more important should i go, go for more number of books plus it to partition then there are you know lot many books sumit sarkar etc right friends it is not the number of books rather what is your approach are you revising them enough revision is more important than covering the more number of books accuracy in the examination will come from the repeated revision then you will be sure in the examination hall that okay i read this concept multiple time and i am sure that this statement is right or this statement is wrong that is what will make the difference right now means coming to the main syllabus in the mains the syllabus is defined but still the questions will tell you the exact pattern the syllabus is modern indian history from about from about middle of the 18th century until the present significant events personalities and issues so in this portion when i say until the present even the post independence history also comes right so this post independence history was not in the prelims but this is part of the mains the freedom struggle its various stages important contributors and uh, you know different parts of the country so the syllabus is focusing on the freedom struggle also in a very good way now let us see the couple of questions from the previous year so the first question is examine the linkages between the 19th century's indian renaissance and the emergence of national identity so the question is simple but it asks for the interlinkage when you are covering the book you should have uh, the interlinking and analytical perspective question number 2 many voices heard strengthened and enriched the national movement during the gandhian phase the question is about the gandhian phase friends i am telling you this gandhi uh, contribution gandhi related news gandhi related uh, the contribution everything the gandhi, gandhi did for this country is very very important then access the role of british imperial power in the complicating the process of transfer of power transfer of power is part of the freedom struggle as we saw in the recent right slide that this freedom struggle is explicitly mentioned in the, in the syllabus so this freedom, freedom struggle question has been asked directly from the post independence they have been asking the questions but the questions are very 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 low in you know series of years the questions have been asked 000 but still you cannot ignore this portion for this you can go through uh, one of the ncert politics since independence right so this is the 12th class ncert this ncert we the uh, again i am naming the politics after independence this ncert will give you a very good view right however you should not ignore because you never know in which year upsc will ask multiple questions from this post independence history now in the mains the resources again will not much change much you should go through the book and in the book you should go through the selective reading of chapter number 8 which talks about the press chapter number 17 which talks about the working class freedom struggle in the princely states indian capitalist and and the national movement and long term strategy of the national movement these are the some of the areas which if you go through them deeply then you can solve many questions of the mains examination spectrum as we have already seen is must you cannot ignore the spectrum now there are some do's limit the resources as i told you history is history nothing can change in the history 
and Bipin Chandra and Spectrum are the favorites of the UPSC because they have covered every fact very beautifully. If you can solve even 80% of the questions from these books, be happy. Don't worry, right? Mind mapping will help. You should make the mind map and you should make the chronology maps also. It will help you memorize the vast information in a very simplistic manner. However, you should not focus upon the, uh, the, the names and the dates. Names and dates, only rare names and dates are important and those names and dates will be multi multiple times repeated in the book and you will automatically remember. You should not consciously, uh, you know, do the ratification of any names and dates. Make your own short notes that will actually help you revise in the examination time. There are some don'ts. Don't cram all the facts. History has having lots of facts, but you should revise and recall the history as a story, not as a collection of facts. Don't be in a hurry. History is something which you can read in interesting way. If you go through, enjoy this, then you can recall the uh, things in the examination hall very easily. And friends, one thing about the history that I will tell you very, very, uh, you know, this thing I felt in my personal experience when, uh, you know, when I went through the examination process that, that, uh, History, you will revise multiple times, but you will, you know, you will lose track of the facts again and again. You will feel that I don't know anything about the history, even just before the day before the examination. So what I am saying is that you should save half day before the examination for the history. So history should be the last thing to revise so that in the examination hall, this is the latest thing that you have revised and you can easily recollect the facts. This is a tip that you should keep in mind, write it down at some place so that you can have this thing in your revision plan at the time of examination. Don't neglect the South Indian history. This is very, very important. In the recent time, this history is becoming more important. The questions are being asked from this part of history. So friends, I hope that you enjoyed the discussion and uh, if you have any query, you can always reach out to us through the email and we will be happy to help you. Thank you very much.